Hi, Bird Talk fans. Today is another episode of Hobotomous Test Question Reviews. Just like before, give me a star for each correct answer and fire for each incorrect answer, and a heart if you like this series. Without further ado, let's get into it. When entering a patient room to draw blood from an individual on contact precautions, which PPE is generally required? Gloves only, gloves and gown, gloves, gowns, and face shield, or gloves, gown, face shields, and respirator? The answer is B. When entering a patient room with contact precautions, the generals require PPE is gloves and gowns. Keep in mind that both gloves and gowns should be removed upon leaving the patient's rooms. The additional PPE may be required depending on if the patient is doing a procedure at the time or not. For doublet precautions, the general PPEs are gloves, gowns, and face shields, and short D is usually the requirements for airborne precautions. Underfilling a green cap evacuated collection tube may result in low test results, clotted specimens, cell morphology change, or no adverse effect. Scene 5. The answer is A. The green cap tube may contain either lithium heparin or sodium heparin and is usually used for chemistry tests on plasma. Underfilling the green top tube may result in low test values because the blood is diluted in excess amount of heparin the minimum acceptable drawn volumes for the green top tube is 50%. Overfilling, on the other hand, may result in insufficient heparin to prevent blood clot and cause the specimen to clot. If this occurs, then the blood sample may be discarded and a new specimen should be obtained. The tube that cannot be overfilled or underfilled is the blue top tube. The ratios for blue top tube should be kept at 9 to 1 ratios. The blue top tube is usually used for coagulation tests. Alcohol-based antiseptic is most commonly used than iodide-based antiseptic because alcohol is more effective, alcohol is less expensive, iodide is more irritated to the skin, or iodide is more likely to cause allergic response. The answer is D. Alcohol-based antiseptic is more commonly used than Iodide-based antiseptic because iodide is more likely to cause an allergic response. Many people are allergic to iodide. In most cases, 70% alcohol is used as antiseptic before blood draw. Other antiseptic like chloroprep can be used in place of alcohol if the patient is allergic to alcohol or in case of blood alcohol level tests. If serums appear milky, it likely indicator of lipemia, bacteria infections, viral infections, or dehydrations. The answer is A. How can we tell if something is lipemic? After blood is spun and separated in centrifuge, the serums of plasma portions is milky in appearance. This likely indicates lipemic which is an increase in lipids or fat from ingestions of food. If the serums of plasma is lipemic, it may interfere with some of the tests. Let's talk a little bit about bacterial infections. We cannot really tell what caused the infections, but we can kind of tell if the patient has an infection or not because of a thick, buffy coat. The buffy coat is the white layer between red blood cells and serum of plasma layer. The increase of white blood cells is an indication of an infection somewhere in the body and that would lead to a thicker buffy coat. This infection could be bacteria or viral infections. Dehydrations. We can tell when a patient is dehydrated during the blood draw. The blood would be thick and have a slow blood flow. The patient would have higher hematocrit compared to when the patient is fully hydrated. Hematocrit is 
the measurements of the red blood cells compared to the liquid portions of the blood. So when we dehydrate it, our liquid is lower than normal. Which of the following methods may prevent hemoconcentrations during venous puncture? Ask the patient to hold a fist during blood draw, thoroughly massage the vein before venous puncture, release the tourniquet after two minutes, or D, advise the patients to avoid pumping the fist. The answer is D. The method that may prevent hematoma concentrations during venous puncture is to advise the patients to avoid pumping the fist. The patient should be told to open the hands when blood begins to flow, and the tourniquet should be released within one minute. Massaging the vein excessively or squeeze the tissues before vena puncture may cause some of the fluid from the plasma into capillary and surrounding tissues, also resulting in hemoconcentrations. That's all I have for today. Did I miss anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know, I will try my best to find out for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is the general practice at the moment. As time change, certain practice may change and different institutions may have different policies. So please keep an eye out for that. If you like my video and think it's helpful in any way, please share it with your friends. And I shall see you all next time. As always, remember, your blood tell you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.